Good evening. I wrap Stina of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up, and this is for Tuesday, the 11th of May, 2021, and we're sitting here about 7:15 at night. Okay. Big break today in the markets, healthy break. Do I think anything's really changed? I want to be honest, no. I think markets got ahead of themselves. I think the uh, ratios, uh, the valuations in stocks, individual stocks might have gotten too high. You know, I keep talking about ARC, but I, I want you to understand, this woman created Kathy Woods a product line, and people like her product line. She allocates how much money is going into the different product lines, but if you want to be invested in a certain area, that, that's her product. So it became very popular because she had the right idea and I give her all the credit in the world. Now, I did hear today that she was trimming some of her holdings on Apple, and uh, you know their job is to keep allocating money, and I'm sure they've had some big monies taken out as the market has gone out of favor on a lot of the holdings that they have. It'll come back. That's just the nature of how it works. Let's go to the chart action, though. In the chart action, you can see you were in this market probably up in the 160 area or so. You cracked the 100 level and you had a good rebound from there. Oftentimes, even numbers, 100, 125, 150 levels, they become important as you get up to them. Why is beyond me, but it's something that I've noticed over my many years of charting. The pattern of the chart is still bearish. You have lower highs, lower lows. That's not hard to figure out. The market's underneath the 200-day moving average, and it stayed under it. So that tells me on the way back up, assuming there's an up, that that could be a resistance point, certainly the 18. So between 113.37 and 117.92, that would be the resistance. But if you get over 113.13, you end this leg of the downside. So that's very important. Bollinger Bands, this market has got the Gorilla Glue trade. Now, what do I mean by the Gorilla Glue? We all know that one of the strongest glues we buy in the store after Elmer <laughs> went away, they're there. I use it for my woodworking, and I do woodworking. Um, but that's what I use there. But when I'm doing other things that I need a lot of strength, it's the Gorilla Glue strength. Holding on to that number and not backing away. That's what I defined it as. And that often just cuts through everything until it doesn't cut through everything anymore. Do I know where it'll end? No. I know that when the market had three days in a row under it, you heard me say this, it's going to move to the right-hand side. It's rare that it goes to five. That does not mean you're a buyer looking for it to go up. It means you, if you're selling, you might be able to do better on the right-hand side of it. Got it? Does it mean that if you have other indicators that say maybe it's time to cut my short position? Sure, it's all tools. There is no one tool. It's putting together the indicators. In my charting course, for example, if you look at this and you add to it the slow stochastics, I'm sorry, how hard is it to grasp the concept? You've got moving averages, you have the swing line, you have Bollinger Bands, and you have Slow Stochastics. If you can't get five things, I don't know what to do with you. Then within the five, you learn the techniques of the five. Why those five? Because each is a filter on the other. And yes, I tried different things over the years, and I'm very comfortable. Stocks, options, futures, trading, whatever it might be, ETFs and spiders, that these work in all the environments. So I'm very comfortable. Work means I can look at a chart and define what I want to do. You have to define what you want to do or talk to somebody that you want with that. And that, that's always important. What does this person do? Who do I bounce an idea off of? You know, online trading is fun. Everybody does it. The problem is it's lonely. It's no longer getting on the phone with your broker, is it? What do we think of this? I mean. That was my day in the 80s. Uh, clients would be calling, the lines would be there. I'd, I'd, only, I'd have a, a timer, and I'd have to allocate my time. And then I'm going, how am I ever going to do research? But you're doing pretty well with what you're doing financially. But I'd, I'd work 18-hour days. I'm not kidding. I still find myself, I get up at 4 in the morning. I typically go to bed, maybe 11. I finally fall asleep to 12, and I'm up at 4. My life hasn't changed. And I love it, you know, so I'm, I'm not a guy complaining about it. Well, as I look at it, so we can get a bounce here. Are we embedding? 
Well, both numbers did close under 20. Both were under 20 on Monday, and both were 20 the day before. So these bounces until that red line closes over 20 are to be sold, and that's what I think will happen. I think they're still selling it until the market loses. That red line has to get back over 20. That's my get out of Dodge number. Not so in GameStop. This is still what I call that psychiatry trade. You try the upside, you don't go anywhere. You try the downside on the Bollinger Band, you don't go anywhere. You're not trending and you're oversold. Let somebody else have it. Pave. Pave for the first time in a while is losing its embedded reading. Time to be gone. So long, pave. Pavement, I'll see you later. And the reason, you lost the embedded reading, you're under 79, I'll look for the market to get a new situation development. And I know you're gonna say, but it's still up. And I'm telling you, momentum often leads price, that's all. Apple, do you really wanna sell the 200-day average of close? It's often support. We saw an arc, they went right through it. But that doesn't mean the probability isn't that it's there. And this is the first challenge in a day where you hit both numbers and found that support. Okay, oversold. Are we trending down? No. Washout time? Yes, you got as low as what, 122.78? Okay, we have to see what the weekly charts look like and we do that in the morning's paid subscriber video, not here. XSD, higher high, lower low, but what did we have? And I pointed this out. We had a bearish crossover right here on these semiconductors. And while everybody's running to the president's office and they're forming leagues, the semiconductor group, watch, they're in trouble. This is coming down, not up. Okay, that's all I can tell you. Are we embedding? Well, both numbers today were under 20 on the slow stochastic. Yesterday they were under 20, but not the day before. So they need another day to do that. The odds don't favor, they'll get it. Most markets don't embed. They get overbought, oversold, and turn away most of the time. Podex, okay. Again, the sideways action has me concerned. Again, I don't like when you're that narrow. Is the market basing, topping? Right now it favors that it topped. Why? Because you're under the 100-day average and the 18. You're not trending. You have a higher high, lower low. You hit support where the pros, if they were short, I don't know what system they'd use to be it, but there's always somebody long and short. I still say they would cover there. Most systems will have a get out number. Does it have to be a Bollinger Band? No. It could be a different algorithm but they're using something based on this philosophy often. I cannot say the word always because I don't know. ESGU, psychiatry trade. Call your doctor. It didn't go to the upside. Ah, I'm gonna sell it. Oh, it's not going to the downside. I'm getting annihilated. Why am I in this? Which way is it gonna go out? Why waste your time and effort? XLE, well, I'm a little concerned right here. What just happened? This is the energies. So if we come back, when's the first time we had both numbers over 80? It certainly wasn't last Wednesday, but it was last Thursday, Friday, yesterday, and today all of a sudden you're under a 79 reading. As far as I'm concerned, get, get out, go, goodbye. And that's what I would tell my clients. If it regroups, terrific. If it doesn't, it's been a nice run, ran that whole number, but momentum often leads price. In the EFA, emerging markets, you're not trending. You're in that broader sideways action. Lower and low to the Bollinger Band, higher high, back down. Recognize this because it keeps you, how do I say this? It keeps the positive energy going and you get rid of the negatives that take you away from what you should be doing in a positive light. I am not one of these guys that's ever been to a guru, any of that, so don't take what I'm saying that way. I'm a guy that wrote a book, The Psychology of Smart Money, and I do know that the negative you get, you hum on that, you, you can't get away from it, mm, why did that happen, blah, blah, instead of the positives. You're gonna have losers, but you have to also know trades to avoid. That's part of the art of trading, and I think that's part of that. 
GLD is bullish. Now the question is, it's overbought. So both numbers were over 80 today. They were over 80 yesterday, not the day before. I'm waiting for them to embed. Then you know I'm going to get aggressive. I pull out my six guns and I'm ready to come in after and if they embed. I wait. Was the market bullish anyways? Yeah, it got friendly when it got through these numbers here and that one, but very hard to have gotten in on the long side if you're a trend trader. The gold miners, much easier, much easier. Here when they crossed that, they became bullish, but they got overbought right away. And you're fighting that 200-day average in the upper Bollinger Band. That's a hard thing to get through right away, and that's why it's fighting that battle there. TLT, you're stuck in no man's land. This is again that psychiatry move, maybe. You did close underneath the Bollinger Band. Another day tomorrow under it and in the lower quadrant is a breakout to the downside. Lower quadrant is just that. Makes a lower low, closes lower on the day and lower 25% of the market. Then I have techniques that I start looking at for the short side. FXE, overbought into the upper Bollinger Band so long. I am bullish long term, but why there? And that's how you start looking at markets. So I want you to consider this. Start your day by getting into my subscriber videos where you get to bounce your own ideas. What is he seeing on those charts? Which one is he looking at? And I covered 40 some odd charts for you in the morning with very specific, do this, do that. I am not timid, you know that. I'm gonna look at weekly charts. I'm gonna look at the daily. You can look at this, these videos either on your uh, app that we give you for your phone. You can do it on your charting software if you use ours. There's many ways. I cover all these different sectors now in the marketplace. You know that I've added Hack and some of the others that aren't even up here. So I'm constantly moving. Uranium is now covered very nicely in all this. So I'm doing all that for you and I listen to what you want. $8.95 for the first 30 days, 24 videos a month, each approximately 20 minutes long. If you go to our website to watch them, as you pull along, each of the sections you saw, it lights up and tells you which one you're in, be it the currency, the metal section, uh, whatever section you're looking at, it tells you that. And I do it always in the same order each and every way, other than when I add new charts, obviously. To find out more, go to our website, under the word research. It's all explained there with our different packages. I think you'll find it interesting. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.